Hi, everyone. Welcome to our In Vivo Orthodontic Planning Webinar. My name is Mike Joyce, and I'm the Director of Customer Success here at Osteoid. Also joining me is my colleague, Anna Lard, our Senior Application Specialist, and we will be hosting today's one-hour planned webinar. As a reminder, we'll have everyone muted during today's session. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and we'll save, uh, save time at the end for Q&A. Now I'm going to go through who we are and what we do. Here at Osteoid, we are a pioneer 3D imaging software company, mainly specializing in dentistry. Our 3D imaging software in vivo was created in 2004 under the company name Anatomage, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. And Invivo has become the standard in the 3D dental imaging world for the last 15 plus years. So for today, we're going to, going to specifically focus on how we fully support orthodontic planning. At this point, I'm going to hand it off to Anna so she can go through today's agenda as well as an overview of our products. Then she'll start a live demo in our software. Anna, please take it from here. Thank you, Mike. And welcome everyone to our second episode of Get to Know in Vivo, where we'll be covering our orthodontic solutions. Um, we will be hosting more of these webinars in the near future, so please feel free to give us your feedback on what you would like to get to know next. Um, so our agenda for today is to introduce you to some of our products and services, uh, focusing primarily on orthodontic planning. As we work our way through these products and services, we're going to work through a few cases together with our Invivo 6 Plus software and highlight how these features can streamline your diagnosis and planning process. We are going to explore how our software interfaces with InVivo Workplace, in vivo workplace um, platform and show you a few features that can help you utilize this platform for viewing and sharing. And finally, we're gonna take, a, take you um, through our InVivo model services, reviewing a bit of what this process looks like for taking advantage of this service the options that are available, and what makes this service powerful for our orthodontic workflows. And just to give us a, a quick recap here of our products and services, um, on this slide here, I have our three ma major products and services that are all tied into orthodontic use. Um, to start, we have our Invivo 6 Plus software alongside its companion 3D analysis. And this is our 3D imaging and treatment planning software. Um, it allows you to bring in your DICOM data, analyze and confirm your patient's prognosis, determine the best treatment route and provide not only yourself, but your patients with a clear visual of what the end result can be. And then again, in vivo workspace, um, this can be used alongside our software. It is our cloud-based platform that provides medical professionals with file sharing and viewing, as well as collaboration. Finally, our InVivo model services. Um, this is our digital modeling and segmentation service um, that we offer for not only our orthodontic users, but other specialty practices. Um, this service, you're simply sending us your DICOM images. Our team meets with you for live treatment assessment and clinical review before we expertly craft your patient-specific digital study model. Now that we have an overview of these products and services, let's, let's jump into the software. So if you missed our last webinar episode here, I'm just gonna give us a, a quick recap on our InVivo software. As you can see, it is comprehensive in nature. It is organized by a series of tabs here up at the top, followed by a toolbar underneath that has tools that are both consistent across the different tabs, as well as different, uh, different in nature and are specific to the tab that we are in. Um, we also have our side panel here that, that you will see 
um, some commonalities again occurring in this side panel, as well as um, different features that will help us um, utilize the specific tab that we are working in. For our orthodontic um, webinar today, we're going to be focusing on several different tabs that have to do with this specific workflow. Those tabs include our airway tab, the TMJ tab, superimposition, gallery, model, and 3D analysis. So since I'm already on the airway tab here, let's jump right into it. Um, what you'll see here is our axial and sagittal views that will automatically generate when you click to this tab. Um, and our sagittal view, we want to go ahead and make sure is essentially being cut down our mid-sagittal plane. And this will help us um, isolate our airway as well as our nasal, nasal passages. This tab also provides us with a really great endoscopic view of the internal anatomy structures of our airway. So to get started, I've gone ahead, I can scroll through these different um, slice views. If I hover over my sagittal view, I can make sure that I'm in a nice mid-sagittal cut and then I can come right over to create airway. The software is going to guide us through our airway isolation by letting us know to place a couple of points in the direction of airflow. Typically, what I like to do is place these points somewhere um, on the soft palate, going in the direction of airflow, ending somewhere along the epiglottis, and right-clicking to finalize my isolation. You will see at the bottom that our screen has adjusted and populated some additional views. Um, the first is our 3D rendering here that we can manipulate, which is giving us our total volume as well as our minimum area. And then our graphical data that is represented from that model. Um, if we click anywhere on our, our graph here, which is displaying our anterior posterior, as well as our right and left distance measurements and our cross-sectional area, um, it will display as well on our 3D rendering here, showing us the approximate location um, of those values that are being calculated by the airway measurement. In addition, you will notice that our, our airway is colorful. Um, this is due to the um, coloration of our model itself. Um, so if we go over to our side panel here, we will see our um, different criteria that can be adjusted to fit more in line with um, both past and current um, airway studies and clinical findings that have to do with this particular element of isolation. So for our color minimum, um, this is essentially us telling the software where we want um, it to begin calculating the airway um, thickness or essentially where, where we want the colors to start. Um, so if this value is lower, we may see less coloration. If it is higher, we're going to see a wider variation of those colors on where it starts. Um, in addition for this coloration of the airway, obviously black is where we are seeing the most constriction, um, white being the widest part of our airway. The next criteria here is our color increments. So this is where we can adjust and tell the software um, how we want those colors to um, variant in our model here, how much we want them to display before shifting to the next color. Um, so similarly to our, our color minimum here, um, the larger the number, the larger the color block will appear on our model. So if we were to shift this to 75, we will see a, a differing value. And the um, editing, nature of these two um, different criteria allows us again to stay within um, a more current uh, isolation or clinical finding of what a constricted airway may be. And then last but not least, our threshold value. Um, so this is essentially, again, us as a clinician telling the software how sensitive we want it to capture that airway space. Um, so in our axial and in our sagittal view, we can see that the airway is showing up in red. So for instance, if we have a scan that has a little bit of, of scatter that is shooting over into our airway spaces, making it a little bit difficult um, for us to pick up on the actual space of an airway itself. If we adjust this threshold to be more sensitive 
on this end, um, we can fill out this model to get a really nice airway, even with a scan that may not be as optimal for, for identifying that airway. In addition, before I move on to, to the next tab here, um, we do have a clipping tool. Um, I actually may not want to include this space here, which is um, the airway space between um, the tongue and the soft palate that is also being captured by my isolation. So to remove that, I'm gonna go ahead and utilize the airway sculpting tool. This is gonna bring us to another view that has our 3D volume in place. And we're just drawing a nice sculpt around that area and left clicking to remove that. And we can go ahead and come to our layout, come back to our slice view and see that adjusted airway. If we find that we made a mistake with that clipping, we can simply come to our edit undo and it will bring that back for us. The next tab that we are gonna jump into that we find prevalent in our orthodontic um, user workflow is the TMJ tab. So as its name suggests, this is for isolating the temporal mandibular joint. Um, before we jump into this, um, you will notice that most of my cross-sectional views are blank, but we're actually gonna jump into our orientation tool. And we are gonna go ahead and click adjust. And I like to do this so that way I am setting the parameters of what um, I'm viewing in those different cross-sectional views. So for instance, with this particular um, area of interest, I'm actually going to bring my top bar so it sits somewhere um, mid-orbital, I, I would say in this case. And my lower bar should be um, ideally with the occlusal plane of the patient. Jump on back. Um, the software is intuitive enough to um, pre- trace our focal truss for us in the right and left. Um, you can simply drag and drop these on the condyle. It does save us a little bit of time in that specific space. Um, I'm actually gonna walk us through drawing these focal troughs for the right and left um, naturally. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and isolate in our axial view the widest part of our condyle before we do that. Click our arch slide or focal trough view and go ahead and select the, the side that we're gonna start with, which is the right. Now we can give a little bit of space between the condyle and the other anatomy structures if we do want to view those in addition to our isolation. Um, you can see my focal trough here is following me, similar to what we might see in the arch section. We can right click to finish off that, move on to the left, do our isolation, right clicking to end. And here we have um, this specific view, which is one that I generally enjoy um, having as it gives me the more optimal views in both frontal and lateral. Um, we have our 3D rendering, which has been sculpted for this isolation. Um, one thing I do like to come over to is actually the frontal adjustment view where we can switch to the frontal slices and scroll through them on the right and left, as well as um, going through our right to left isolation or laterals um, in particular. If you find after you've done your isolation, as I sometimes do, we, we like to see more of those cross sections, we can actually come over to our layout button here and adjust as needed from there. So if we want to see more of those laterals, if we prefer to move this axial view altogether, we can just do our frontal and our lateral views um, from there as well. In addition, you can adjust your, um, similarly to our airway, our slice thickness. So if we want to make those adjustments in our lateral slices, we can do so, um, as well as bring on sharpening if uh, needed, if we're not in an optimal resolution for the scan. For superimposition, I'm going to go ahead and bring in another, another scan for us. Um, this is a tab that I'm actually going to come back to once we get into 3D analysis as well. But I want to show you some of the more basic um, capabilities of this tab. It's going to be used when we're working with multiple scans, usually for pre-op, post-op assessments, or when we're taking a look at the course of treatment with specific um, time points. 
So we can bring in all of those scans and view them, view them in pairs. So that way we can compare, you know, beginning to middle, middle to end, um, beginning to end in, in that specific way. For this specific case, um, to get us started with this tab, I do have um, more of an orthodontic with oral surgery type of case where the patient is wearing our traditional braces set and we'll be bringing in a post-operative scan. So to do that, we are actually just gonna be utilizing our side panel here and clicking import new volume. We're gonna go ahead and browse for our file, which is right here. You will notice first off that our secondary volume is gonna come in in a different color, both in our 2D as well as our 3D. And then we also have our manual registration widget. So this red, yellow, and blue circle, we hover over our 2D, they will also <laughs> display for us. Um, I like to go ahead and um, align my patient manually before I use the other registration methods. And this just kind of allows me to eyeball the position um, of the patient, get them in a more optimal space before I get into the more robust registration processes. So if I'm happy kind of with that pre-registration, I can also kind of confirm where I, where I might be um, utilizing the 2D space there. Um, we can switch between these and make, the, make them larger if we want to during that registration process as well. And click back to get to our normal screen. I can toggle off this manual registration um, and I'm gonna bring our attention to the other processes that we do have here, which are the point registration and our volume registration. My preference is the, the volume registration in particular. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. You will notice we have our dialog box here as well as three boxes that have populated within our um, three different uh, sectional views here. So essentially what we do is go ahead and set our box on the approximate area that we are looking to isolate. In this case, we want to pick stable <laughs> landmarks or stable anatomy that hasn't moved um, because it is a surgical case. We want to utilize those elements so that we are not relying on um, particular structures that have moved. Um, I usually stay here where we can see the um, cella tersica as well as our nasion area and um, typically include some portion of the cervical spine. I'm gonna go ahead and click perform registration. It's gonna do a little thinking for us. But the nice thing about this process is again, it's lining things up in a more concrete way using a volumetric type of registration. There are some um, view presets that we can get into as well here. So if we prefer to see the volume in different ways that we're familiar with, um, such as the teeth rendering, we can go ahead and make those adjustments. And the other layout option within here, so it functions a little bit differently than the TMJ, we can cycle through these, is actually our synchronized volume. So we can rotate our pre-op, post-ops, um, whether they are surgical in nature, as well as orthodontic to um, get a really nice visual and presentation for our patient. So again, I'm gonna come back to this tab here in just a moment. I am going to be jumping into 3D analysis from here. So I have another scan for us to, to utilize with this. So 3D analysis, um, I like to actually categorize by a few um, different core functionalities for this tab. Um, the first being its 3D tracing component, which is gonna allow you to identify our, your anatomical landmarks on the CBCT scan um, directly and provide automatic calculations either that we have pre-programmed or that we have customized um, for our analysis digitally. The other element is our photo wrapping tool, which applies a 3D face wrap to our CBCT that we can use either for simulation purposes or presentation. And then 
if you haven't guessed it already, it's the superimposition portion of this tab um, where we can overlay tracings and do data comparisons um, like pre-op, post-op, or bringing in certain time points um, that correspond over the length of treatment. So before we jump into the main element, which is our 3D tracing, I'm actually gonna direct you to our settings, our settings tool here. Um, this is actually one of the more customizable tabs of our software. Um, so what you're seeing here is our setup window. So our tracing tasks, our different landmarks, um, our measurements, our norms, these are all things that we can establish and customize. Um, if I jump to our analysis um, library here, you can see that we have a list of pre-programmed and set analyses that are um, widely used by our orthodontic users. They are directly derived from their 2D counterparts in nature. Um, so we have our measurements and our landmarks here that are part of those, those analyses. Um, if we need to build something based off of one of these or something completely new, that is something that the software is capable of. For our specific setting, we're gonna go ahead and use the default as well as the Steiner. All right, so we are ready to jump into our tracing. We're gonna go ahead and click create tracing. So one thing you will notice is that we have first and foremost, our tracing task list, um, as well as a change in our layout. We have now the slice locator layout view, which is giving us um, our axial, sagittal, and coronal views. They are currently blank. Um, they will populate specific cross-sectional views once we place our landmarks here. So let's go ahead and start. We can do so by clicking start. This will bring us to our first untraced task which in our case is all of them. So we're gonna go ahead and you can see our volume change. My nasion here is floating on my cursor. I'm gonna go ahead and spot it on the nasal suture for us. So that way we have our cross-sectional views populate. So this is gonna help us fine tune and refine our placement by utilizing the 2D um, and kind of always fact checking on our 3D as well to make adjustments on our planes here to show you a bit of a drastic movement. I'm gonna go ahead and place my point in the sinuses and you can see our other um, different cross sections update accordingly. So now we are direct, directly in the sinuses. I'm gonna bring us back to our nasion. Perfect. And then our volume here is um, rotated and ready for our next placement, which is our porion right and then followed by our porion left. And you can quickly see that the workflow centered around tracing is very much um, a placement of a point on our 3D anatomy with a fine tune um, using the 2D structures that we are seeing in our cross-sectional views. So I'm gonna continue on with our orbital or orbitali. In this particular view, again, we're seeing our volume shift. We're actually in a gray scale that has been cut down the mid sagittal plane. So that we can set our um, cella tersica right there in the mid set, uh, saddle. And again, now we're looking at the volume from the bottom up. Um, all of the global properties of manipulating this volume are still present. Um, so we can scroll through this. And this helps us eliminate certain anatomy structures that maybe in the way for, for certain landmarks that we are wanting to place. So I'm gonna go ahead and set our Bayesian down. <clears throat> All right, so thus far we have just been placing um, singular point landmarks. Um, we're actually getting into some of our profile tracings. You may also notice that other more common landmarks are not a part of our list like our a point, B point, ANS, PNS, and that's because our software actually derives them from the, the profiles that we are about to trace. And that's a little bit of how our, our um, 3D tracing software does some of the work for you. Um, it will automatically place those points as these profiles are completed. So let's go ahead and start with our mandible profile. Um, you can most certainly start in the um, condylar process. 
Um, sometimes it is obscured by the, the zygomatic arch there. So I'm actually, uh, my preference, I guess, in starting this is actually over here in the mandibular notch. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it there. And again, we can go back to our 2D to ensure that we are in the proper position for that placement. Clicking along here. And the idea for this particular profile is to go up and around the condyle, following down around the back and going all the way to the chin. And you will notice that um, this guy here is following me and has a little bit of a curve um, to it. So we don't have to be um, too close with our landmark uh, or I guess point placements in our profile tracings. Um, more points will allow you to have a more accurate curve. I do like to go ahead and adjust my brightness as well to help us with this specific structure. This will help ensure that we are remaining on the, the condyle and not going through it to the um, cranial base. And I'm just gonna go ahead and make my way around here. Coming all the way down to the chin and then right clicking to conclude. And I'm gonna bring my brightness down again. Start back here in our mandibular notch for our right. And again, although you can't see my face, I am looking between my 2D and my, my 3D very consistently to ensure, again, I'm not placing these points um, in an area that they should not be in. Coming around. Go midpoint there, went all the way to the jaw. So that concludes those particular profiles. We're going to start with our maxillary profile here, where we um, are going to be placing a point right in this area. You may notice that with this particular profile, we actually have more definition on our um, 2D than on our 3D. So I like to go ahead and approximate my point placement and re really refine that specific um, area on my 2D. So we're gonna go around in a counterclockwise <laughs> type of motion, coming along the palette here, going all the way to the PNS, wrapping around. And then because these profiles do not need to be closed, we're actually going to leave it open. And we're gonna stop roughly opposite of that initial point on the other side of the, of the alveolar bone. And right clicking to finish. Now we're starting on our lower mandible, starting at the infradentale, going around the symphysis. And then again, stopping approximately opposite and right-clicking to finish. So now we are actually moving to our soft tissue profile. So again, we're in a different rendering of our volume. And this is where we can place a couple of additional points to ensure that the curve of our line is going to be as accurate as possible. Um, this will ensure that if we are doing any type of soft tissue prediction or movements within 3D analysis, um, where we're involving the deformation ratios, um, everything is moving in, a, in its approximate um, way in regards to the patient anatomy. So we're gonna go ahead and start at the soft nasion. Make our way around. Again, using that 2D to make sure that we are on the soft tissue. And then what we want to do is come around the upper lip here and end it where it meets our incisor there. Same thing for the lower, starting at the where the lip meets the tooth. Coming around our lower lip and then going around the chin. 
In some cases, um, we do have our orthodontists where they'll take a scan where it might have a chin rest in play. Um, our recommendation and my, my own preference is if it is a possibility to not have the chin rest in play for your patient, that will allow for a more accurate um, definition of this chin area as that will not interfere with um, your specific case. All right, we're getting into some of our tooth profiles. Um, this is our right incisor profile. Um, for this one, it is cut again down the mid sagittal. I'm actually gonna bring it to a frontal position and scroll a bit till we are about midway through the right incisor before putting it back. And this will allow for a more accurate placement of that point. So we're, we can see here floating on my cursor, it's gonna have us place um, approximately three points. The first being the root of our upper incisor. Place that there. Perfect. The second being the crown. And then the third being our labial point. I mean, you can kind of see here that we do have um, what looks like a tooth template that is <laughs> can be adjusted as we move our point. Um, it isn't so much important that the template matches um, the dentition of the patient because what we're looking for is actually the points that we are placing. So those are the most important um, aspects of, of what we're laying down here in our scan. So now we are doing the lower right incisor. So again, what we're gonna go ahead and do is rotate around, scroll till we are about midway through, bring us back to our sagittal view, and then place that root point down. To our coronal aspect. And then bring us back over for our labial point. Wonderful. So we are at our upper right molar profile. Um, you can see here that we're kind of in what I would consider a three-fourths um, clipping of the anatomy here. This will help us identify um, specifically those, uh, those uh, root structures that we're going to be placing points on. So we can scroll through this using our mouse wheel, just as we would normally place that root structure. And instead of our um, coronal and labial points, we have an anterior and a posterior cusp. Right there. There we go, and then we're moving on to our lower here. Um, in some cases, I do find that this might be a little harder to see, especially when we're working in um, the tooth rendering. What can be helpful is actually switching to our grayscale, which helps a bit with the brightness and intensity of this view in particular. So we can set our lower root. Scroll to our anterior cusp and then bring it back to our posterior. Wonderful. And then last but not least, our ANS point. Once it has been concluded, it will congratulate, congratulate you by letting you know all your tasks have been finished. Um, it will go ahead and close itself. And then what we can do is rotate our volume around, switch it back to our preferred method, which for myself is our, our teeth rendering. So that way it's a little bit more opaque for us. Um, and then what we see over here is actually our text view. So it's switched from our slice um, locator view over to our text view in particular. And this is giving us four sets of, of data. Um, landmark is giving us our X, Y, and Z coordinates, so our spatial relation of these points within um, the scan itself. Our different measurements, which we have pre-programmed and predetermined for it to calculate for us. Um, we can toggle these on and off individually. You will notice that they are grouped as well based off of their, the tracing task. So if you do want to bring them all on at once, we can simply select the group 
by left clicking and then left click again to deselect. So we could do that for anterior or posterior dentition or soft tissue. The next element is actually referring to our reference plans that we can bring into play for the visual aspect of this. Um, so if we wanted to bring in our Frankfurt horizontal or a mid sagittal plane, we can do so very easily. And again, these are grouped in, that, in a certain way. So if you want them all to come on at once, um, we can go ahead and select the group altogether or um, select them individually and bring them into play that way. Um, and then finally, the fourth set of data is our analysis um, that which has been completed from these tracing tasks. Um, so we have um, a couple of different things that are being displayed in our analysis tab here. Um, we have the value, the norm and the standard deviation columns here. So our patient, the norm or the demographic that we have selected, and then how that patient differs between the two. And then we have this graphical pictorial, which we like to call the wiggle gram for this particular tab. Um, it's giving us an illustration of what these values look like in a graphical form. Um, these um, colored areas here or triangles or hex or excuse me, um, yeah, triangles in this sense, will let us know areas that may be of concern for this particular patient in a nice um, visual way um, outside of the general data that's being captured from this analysis. All right. Um, the other portion of this um, tab I'm going to get into now, which is actually the face photo wrapping element. Um, this is a very quick and easy feature that is, again, used for presentation or simulation purposes, um, where we're bringing an element of the patient alongside its CBCT. So for this particular case, um, what I want to do is actually go ahead and click the Create Photo, photo Face Wrap. I do have one in place for this case. I'm going to go ahead and replace it. And so it's giving us two options for our photo face wrap. We have our traditional 2D photo where we're just using a frontal image. Or if we do have um, access to a specific um, face photo scanner that provides an OBJ file, we can utilize that as well. So for this particular one, I just have my traditional 2D frontal photo. I'm going to go ahead and click that particular option. It is actually going to go ahead and walk us through a series of steps where we are setting a specific model for this photo to sit on. So the first is setting our threshold value, which is essentially creating that soft tissue um, profile for our photo to sit on. Ideally, we want this model to be as smooth as we can get it without necessarily bringing in necessary scatter. So you can see there that if we get a little too far, we, we introduce a little bit of those elements. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. This is where um, I believe it to be the best and optimize it for simulation. And then I'm clicking create photo, photo wrap. It's gonna say everything has been completed. We've smoothed it out. Um, since we are using a 2D photo, we like to go ahead and apply clipping to this specific aspect. We are essentially creating a mask for that photo to sit on. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and click apply cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and use some of my rotational tools to rotate this around. And as you can see, our lovely red, yellow, blue widgets have come back into play for us. Um, essentially this um, blue axis here is our plane that we will be cutting along. You can see the line running through here. And again, what we're going to want to do is create a nice mask for this photo to sit upon. So we will go ahead and place this plane in an approximate position and click on the area that we want to keep. So the side that we are keeping is this frontal portion. Um, so we'll click uh, right click on that particular part. Um, the other element I'm gonna go ahead and clip off is this top part, which is currently closed off. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. 
And I'm going to angle this here because I do want to remove a portion of this chin area. And it's okay if you make a mistake. We can come over here and click undo. No, it doesn't want to do it for me, but that's okay. We'll rotate up this guy. There we go. We're going to finish cutting. We've got our mask to sit on. And from here, the last and final step is bringing in that frontal photo. So I've got our JPEG here, just our traditional photo. We can see it sitting there in the background. Um, my recommendation and what I prefer is to make my model translucent. And using the shift and control, or if you're on Mac like myself, shift and command, we can scale and position this model to match with the patient. Typically, I like to use um, my soft nasion or the bridge of the nose as well as the eyes to help with that um, specific alignment. Um, we can also use the space bar if we want to tilt or rotate. I'm gonna go ahead. And once we are happy with the general placement there, we can go ahead and click apply photo wrapping. And there is our photo wrap using our, our frontal photo. And this um, actually brings us to the, the last element that I'm gonna be showcasing within 3D analysis, which is our superimposition feature. Um, I'm gonna bring up a final case for us here that will allow us to run through this. And it's gonna be utilizing a couple of different um, timestamps across a treatment case for ortho. So what we have here um, is a more recent case for this particular patient taken. Um, it is traced and completed in particular for um, that element of it. What we're going to do is bring in a previously traced um, scan of the same patient from a previous time point by clicking this um, lovely superimpose option here. Um, what we can do is go ahead and select our trace case. I'm going to go ahead and select my, my file that is from an earlier time point. And what you will see populate in our um, little window here is actually landmarks that we are utilizing um, to superimpose these two volumes together. Um, this is actually, per, actually a more um, advanced and perhaps a more um, accurate way for superimposition, especially when you're dealing with trace cases, um, using the actual landmarks that have been already defined for both cases. And we'll go ahead and click perform registration. It's gonna go ahead and load my previous data. You can already see um, over on our side text view, my 3D volume has popped up as well, um, that now we have a superimposed um, data set that is toggled on with yellow. If we deselect this, it will bring us back to our original tracing element. If we come to our analysis here, we can select it again to go in between the two um, very nicely and easily. We also have our visual aspect where we do have our um, volume um, brought into play. We can toggle this off if we prefer not to see it for both of them using both the view controls here as well as here. This allows us to just focus primarily on those tracing elements. We can also um, actually bring in different elements to that secondary scan, such as the photo wrap. And bring back on our volume as well. And then again, if I jump over to my superimposition tab, now that I have both scans in there and they've been registered using our landmark registration process, um, we can see that secondary um, volume appear in our 2D here. Um, we can see the different landmarks or points that we it is um, calculating and registering to. 
And then we can kind of jump into the different elements that um, we do have available either within our view control, if we wanna switch this back to our tooth and do so as well for the secondary one. We're gonna jump back over here. There we go, we can see that's appearing in the way that we would want it to present. So we can use superimposition in a more refined way as well here. Um, the other element which is going to bring us into our in vivo model discussion is that we can layer the models that, that we would like to um, bring in within superimpose. So both of these scans um, do have uh, in vivo models completed on them. And we can bring them into play within this tab as well. And then we can also bring in those specific elements. So we can bring in our models, bring in our CBCT scan, layer them on top of each other, toggle off certain elements when it gets to be a little bit um, hectic in there. But this again allows us to do our um, comparison of those two tide points in a, in a very defined way. So before we jump into a vivo model, I'm actually gonna bring us back to our PowerPoint to give us a little bit of an overview for that. So as I kind of stated before, InVivo model is a service that our practitioners can utilize when they're looking for a 3D digital study model to bring into their planning. Oops, there we go. Their planning and workflow. Um, the planning process for um, submitting your cases for an InVivo model is very simple and straightforward. Um, we provide you with a secure portal for you to submit your DICOM data. Um, our team of, of trained consultants um, and technicians will meet with you to assess your treatment plan, as well as review your, your clinical um, findings and how you want that case to progress um, or what you would like us to accomplish within that digital study model. And then once it's completed, um, that dashboard where you'll be submitting your DICOM also has a really nice feature for real-time case discussion. So once you've received your digital study model, you can discuss with our team certain specifics that may need to be adjusted or added to that specific case. And down here, I do have um, our options that are available for, for our Invivo model. These are just a few, um, first and foremost being our 3D digital study model, which you're seeing there to the right. Um, 3D cephalometric tracing, we can go ahead and do the legwork for you. Um, SDL to DICOM registration and different model simulations that have to do with growth, um, maxillary expansion, articulation. And these are all things that we can um, preset and pre-program for our clinicians. Um, you can mix and match and combine these different options or you can just do them individually depending on your specific um, case or workflow and how you want to implement this particular service. Um, but it is robust enough for you to have flexibility in what you're, you're deciding to incorporate. Perfect. So jumping back in, I'm going to bring us to a, 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 another final case here. Um, this is an in vivo model that we have completed. Um, we've incorporated a face photo wrapping for this specific patient, and it is illustrating a maxillary expansion as well as articulation and movement for this patient. Um, so to give you an idea, we have our side panel here. We have different layout options. Um, we can view it as it is here. We can switch to our occlusal view as well as our composite view, which gives us a little bit more um, traditional views that we might see for those models or perhaps take of the patient. We have our different model lists. So each individual segmentation of those jaws, of the teeth, of the nerve and, as well as our face photo wrap are all listed here. Um, we can hide all or show all very easily. Um, the skin and jaw opacity can be adjusted as well. Again, for use in our presentation or to um, better analyze, get a cleaner, more accurate clinical visual of what we're looking at. We can bring in our volume if we prefer it to be displayed. And we can toggle it off as well. And then down here is where we can um, both create our own simulations as a provider, 
or have these simulations um, pre-established by our, our technicians. Um, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select simulation and then start. There we go. And so we are seeing the maxillary expansion, the movement um, and growth for this patient, as well as a bit of articulation in the lower mandible. So this helps strengthen our case presentation as well as um, pr promote higher case acceptance. It gives the patient something to look at that is more than just their, their CT scan, as well as confirm the things that you are planning and proposing for their specific plan. So again, we can come in here. Um, it can be as simplistic as just your simple movement. Um, we're incorporating the root structures and the general anatomy of the teeth that we are moving, um, or it can be a little bit more advanced and in depth um, where we're doing different segmentations of, of the maxillary or the different jaw areas. So now that I have my in vivo model, I've done my um, 3D analysis tracing. I've done other isolations within airway TMJ, as well as saved some images to my gallery. What I would like to do is actually share this case, perhaps with either of my referral or with my colleague. And we saw a little bit of this with our last webinar, um, but to do this, we can simply come to file, send file, log into our Invivo Workspace account. And because I'm wanting to share elements of this case with either again, my patient, my another provider or colleague, I'm gonna go ahead and send it as a uh, .inv or an in vivo file format. It's gonna bring up my send to window. I can go ahead and select someone from my contact list or put someone in manually and add specific notes that are um, pertaining to this specific case and send it digitally away. And then the recipient is gonna go ahead um, and receive it digitally, but this is an, a quick recap of our Invivo Workspace um, platform case dashboard. So you can see we have all the cases that we have shared or received from other practitioners or providers. If we click on them, we'll see the different discussions that have taken place between um, ourselves and um, the recipient in particular. If we click our preview button here, it will pop open our web viewer. So for our particular uses in ortho, we see some familiar tabs here other than our section, art section and implant. And we actually see the model tab as well. So it has similar features. We can toggle off our skin and an a our ABO bases and see the same um, models that we are seeing within our Vivo software that have been created by our team and see the same sim simulations that we are, we are doing, as well as any gallery images that we've saved for our colleagues. And with that, um, that concludes today's webinar overview of orthodontic um, features. I'm gonna pass it back to Mike and we are gonna open it up for Q and A. Awesome, great job, Anna. So let's see, we had some questions come in. There's a couple. First question, can I use a 3D face scan for photo wrapping? Great question. Yeah, we, we covered this a little bit earlier. Um, you can absolutely do so as long as it's providing you with that .obj file format. Um, you can bring it into the software similarly to how you would with your 2D frontal photo using that face photo wrap um, function. Awesome. Awesome. And I encourage everyone, uh, we still have time, we still have a couple minutes. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to pop them in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And then I'm going to go through the next two questions that came through. So next one, I already have the Invivo software. Can I add 3D analysis? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's very easy to do so if you're already using the Invivo software. Um, we'll be following up shortly after um, this webinar series. So if you are interested in adding that um, add-on module to your software, um, we can connect with you to go through the process of cost and how to edit. Perfect, perfect. And we'll be sending a follow-up email to everyone that attended today's session that will have a list of the questions um, and the answers as well as a link to the recording. 
All right, next question. I would like to know how to load the OBJ with the colors because I didn't know how to show the colors. That is a good question. With the OBJ in particular, the way that it is loaded through our software currently does not display the colors. But I do know that in the future developments of that feature, it should be able to display that and we can send out a follow up email um, once that feature becomes available. Great, great. Um, can you support um, .ply so I can use the colors? That again relates back to the, the answer before. Um, once it becomes available, definitely we will um, have you on our list of contacts. It is a, a general request that we do see every so often. Um, so definitely. Okay. How can I start using in vivo model? In vivo model, you can start using at any point. Um, if you are interested again with our, our follow-up email, we'll be sending out um, the agreement that gets you started with your doctor profile for in vivo model. Once we set up your, your um, portal with your login credentials, um, that will get you started with submitting cases. And again, you'll meet with our um, trained technicians to review the case specifics that you want to proceed with. All righty. And then someone made a comment that they did not receive the recording for last week's implant session. So we will go back and um, double check to make sure we sent it out to everyone who attended as well as everyone who registered. However, um, you know, we'll just make sure to follow up with you. It looks like it's anonymous attendee, so I'm not sure who asked that question, but we'll make sure that that person gets that recording uh, for sure. And we'll uh, share our contact information before we wrap up so you can message us directly. And then Anna, a question came in the main chat to both you and I about uh, a certain type of tracing available. I'm not sure if you had a chance to see that question. <laughs> Let me take a look, just a moment. If, it, if we didn't see it, um... The Sasuni, yep. The Sasuni yep. was actually at the bottom of that list there. It's already within our um, analysis list. But again, if there's elements of that tracing that are not um, included, such as certain landmarks or um, specific measurements, we can help program those in for you, starting with the, the baseline Sasuni stuff tracing element. Great. And then I have the email for the person who didn't get the recording for last week. So we'll send that person the recording. Perfect. And I think that's all the questions as of right now. Let me just double check. I believe we answered about eight questions right there. So that was really cool. We have three minutes left. If anyone else has any last minute questions, again, we're going to send out a link. Um, you know, in the follow-up email early next week, there will be a link for the recording as well as, you know, a list of the questions and the answers. And we'll be, you know, in touch regardless, you know, next week and just continue the conversations with all of you. And we're very um, excited to keep working with everyone. Thanks again for joining. I think that's, I think that's it. I don't see any other questions. Perfect. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a good